A belt covered with the same fabric which was used in making your dress is often the most becoming for house dresses as well as for better dresses. It's becoming especially if you don't care to call attention to your waistline. Such a belt is often referred to as a self-covered belt. There are many ways to make a self-covered belt and you'll want to choose one which will give you both a smart appearance and durability in the finished belt. Here is a method that I find quite satisfactory and easy. You start with commercial belting. And you'll want to select belting that will wash as well as dry clean. The strip of fabric used to cover the belt is often cut are usually cut along the lengthwise grain of the fabric. However, you could cut it on the crosswise grain if that would give you a better design for your dress. If you cut it along the very edge of the fabric, be sure to cut away the selvage so that both sides of your strip will be the same. We cut that strip six inches longer than the waistline measurement. And our model's waistline measurement was 28 inches, so I cut my strip the 28 inches plus the extra 6 inches. Here's how I arrived at the width of this strip of fabric. When the belt is finished, the fabric should extend a little bit on each side so that the belting will not show when it's being worn. The belting I'm using is three quarters of an inch wide. We'll double that width, then add one eighth of an inch. Then when we fold that strip so that the edges meet in the middle, we'll have just the right amount of fabric at each edge. That was twice the width of the belting plus an eighth of an inch. This method is acceptable for fabrics about the weight of cotton print. If your fabric has a design, now is the time when you'll want to be sure it will be centered. Now, by bringing these two edges together, it's easy to keep the folded edges straight and smooth. If your fabric will take a firm crease, you may not need to base these edges in place. One end of the belt should be cut to a point. You can very quickly cut a pattern for that point out of paper. First, a strip just the width of your belting. Then fold that right through the middle and trim to get the taper you want. Fold that right on your belting and trim and you have a nice, well-centered point. Now we're ready to put the belting down on the fabric, but we don't want the raw edge of the belting to show here at the point. So we'll bring the fabric around to the back side to cover just the point. Here's how we do it. Bring the point of the belting about half an inch from the end of the fabric. Then fold along the point First one side and then the other, creasing them well.
Unfold and trim off just outside of the fold that you made first. Let your creases fall back into place. And now the same thing with your fabric. About half an inch from the end, fold first one, then the other. Press the creases in. Then trim off the excess from just outside the first fold that you made, but leave enough to catch under the stitching. Start stitching at the point and on the wrong side. After you've stitched from the point to the edge of your belting, leave your needle down, raise your presser foot, and turn your corner. Now you can use the edge of your belting as your seam guide. Start stitching at the point again and stitch the other side in place in exactly the same way. We have four threads at the point where we started both of our rows of stitching. We don't want to knot, so the best thing to do is to pull those threads through to the wrong side, thread them into a needle, and then bring them down between the fabric and the belting and tack them in place. And here's the belt ready for the buckle. This is just one of the many kinds of buckles found on the market today. Whatever kind you get, again, be sure that it's washable. And follow the directions that come with a particular kind of buckle that you have purchased. Remove one side of the covering from your gum pattern. And place the gum side of the pattern down on the wrong side of your fabric. Place it with the grain of your fabric. And then trim around the pattern. Cut down through the middle and along each of the slashes indicated. Then remove the other covering from the gum paper. And place the buckle, the top buckle, which is the largest of the two, down on the gum side. Locate the crossbars on your pattern and center your buckle in that way. After this, it's simply a case of folding the edges over smoothly and neatly.
Finish by pressing the back side of the buckle into place. And then attach the prong with pliers. Now you have your belt and your buckle. Let me describe what you'll do from here. Cut the slot for the prong of your buckle. Start two inches from the end. Make a slot a little less than an inch long. Be sure you get your prong right side up. Point it away from the end of the belt, then it will go on correctly. The measurements we have given will enable you to use your machine to stitch the buckle in place. And now for the other end. In order to have a good fit, start at the crossbar right even with the fabric. Measure off your exact body measurement and put one hole at that spot. Then put another hole on either side. Eyelets will reinforce the holes. You'll have a self-covered belt that you'll enjoy wearing.